Let's start with the app story first. And I think at the root of that is anybody can develop an educational app. They could be 16 year olds, they could be Doesn't engineers, matter. they can Doesn't call matter. it educational. Anybody, you wanna put something on iTunes? You know, develop your app today, tomorrow call it educational and pop it on the iTunes. Even though an app has the, the logical sort of semantic two plus two, yeah. you found kids really are not about that in their downtime, correct? Well, the truth <clears throat> is that there are something in the order of, oh my gosh, what is it? Like a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand apps that are out there just for the preschool set. So the real question facing us is not whether or not you're going to do apps. All right. You know, the iPads came in, what, 2010. Let's think about that. 2010, that means they're only eight years old. Uh, three years before that, we got the iPhone. So here you have these platforms that are dying for content, right? And that kids are virtually addicted to. So I think what happened is people ran to try to fill the void. And they put app after app after app. And they were allowed to call it educational or religious or whatever they want to call it. They can call their app and just post it on the iTunes store. So the question I think that faces us is, one, how do parents know? If I have to sift through a couple hundred thousand apps, which I'm not going to do, I'm just going to believe what the title tells me and I'm going to download it for my kid. And two, when is educational really educational? All right, what counts? And so we decided to do a review of the literature to say, okay, what, what do we know? What do we know in the field of psychology that would enable us to actually say that something is more educational as opposed to less educational? And these kind of features popped out of the literature. Active, engaged, meaningful, socially interactive, and has a learning goal. All right, let me break them down. Active, not passive. You want it not to just be a swipe. You want it to be minds on. But you gotta think about it. Those are problem solving. That's when kids are discoverers, active, engaged. What we tended to do in the wave one of the app world is we would take something non-digital, put a chip in it, and call it an app. And we put all this junk in with it. So you're reading a book. Norma book, right? And all of a sudden, a Curious George book, bing! Tell me all the things that start with G. Can you, well, what's that got to do with the storyline? So it's diverting you all over the place. So it's not engaging, it's distracting. Meaningful. Meaningful should have something to do with the life you know about, the world that you live in. It should be culturally sensitive. If you can't make sense of it and it's too distant, you're not going to learn from it. And socially interactive. Oh, you can play solo but the currency for human beings is the social card. In fact, we live through what we call socially gated brain, okay? Through social interactions, we learn so much. So now we put it together in a tweet. Active, engaged, meaningful, socially interactive, have a learning goal, got an educational app. So as they're kind of looking through these, what are, they're searching for those four qualities, but yeah. how else can they tell face value? Should they play it, for example? I have three sons, and I remember what that's like. And frankly, I didn't even have the time to take a shower. So I wouldn't have time to go around testing all the apps. There are places like Common Sense Media that have done a really good job of sifting through everything and allowing us to find the better and the not better apps that are out there. Um, for my own satisfaction, I would like to at least look at what my kid is doing. And if it looks like it's just a rote memory kind of thing, and the kids are just spitting out answers in response to something they see, that's not a great educational app. There are fabulous games out there. They're interactive. There are things kids want to play. Some are educational, some are not. So I would say just take a peek. Take a peek at what your kid is doing. And, uh, and if you don't like what you see or something common sense goes nix, then don't do it and try to really give value. How do they go about doing that to vet the app? Well, again, it's very, very hard. 
because there's practically a tsunami of apps out there. And every single day we are adding more to the beachfront of apps that are available for young kids. So if we don't really go to trusted places or look at something like common sense media, um, it's going to be very hard for us to do it ourselves or unless we want to make it a full-time job. Talking about the apps that are educational, but are really sort of just, they're just either swiping or they're adding two plus yeah. two. Can you talk to the fact that that's just more or less like an extension of maybe what they've been through in school and not as entertaining? Nowadays, everybody's changing the way we think about school to something that we can call a breadth of skills, a suite of skills. Uh, in our book, Becoming Brilliant, we talk about what these skills could be that are grounded in the science, that are malleable over time, and that are measurable. Okay, so now let's ask, how do we really learn as humans? Everybody out there is going to tell you that when they're just listening to that lecture, they're kind of rubbing their eyes, they're doing their best to stay awake. What we're realizing is that showing works better than telling, right? Doing is what gets us involved. Question asking, having agency as a learner. You're the one guiding where you want to go in this educational system. And having mentors and teachers and coaches who bring you along and say, you know, you might have tried that. Or, oh, look at this. Now look, there's always going to be classroom learning. But as best we can, we're trying to modify the education system so it's more sensitive, more responsive, more student-led, and teacher-coached. How much of a challenge is this to do this with an inanimate object in front of you? Do you have any concerns about that kind of interaction? First of all, there's good and bad apps. So it's like there's junk food and there's non-junk food, do you know what I mean? And it's not like all junk food's bad. I mean, I happen to be an aficionado, not of junk food. I love it myself. But I wouldn't sub it for dinner, okay? So that's the first thing. Make sure you're not just giving your kids junk food. The second is once you find the stuff that's nourishing, right, then um, the question is how much of it should a child have? I mean, I don't know if you can ever have too many green beans or too much broccoli, but but it seems to me there's a point at which, you know, mountains of broccoli aren't going to help you anymore with the vitamins and just make kids sick. So I think we want to we wanna put it in balance. Um, children aren't going outside anymore. Uh, Loeb called this, Loeb called it a, a uh, nature deficit disorder. I love that term. Um, kids aren't active. They're more passive. They're sitting down. We are raising a generation of couch potatoes. There are studies out there to suggest that children aren't as good at reading emotion in the eyes of another person, in connecting. They're more anxious about not getting the one right answer. So what are we doing? We're taking a species that has evolved to be magnificent with other people and we're saying now Go into solitary confinement with your apps. I don't believe solitary confinement is a good idea, but I think having some stuff, whether it's the really good apps or the junk food apps, oh, why not? It's a fun thing to do and it's engaging. So talking about the junk food, just hitting on that, because one of the things I read was it's like chocolate-covered broccoli. Which yeah, don't you I love that? that? Yeah. I love that term. It's Hapgood's term, and it's brilliant. Um, yes, I mean, you can try to dress stuff up to look educational, but not really, you know? And it's not really play if it's got broccoli underneath. So we, we really have to think about, think about that. And we haven't done a good job of sorting out the, the different interesting, healthy, really good apps out there. Summarize your research in this paper. Research in this paper was about asking not what don't we know in the science, which is the way scientists usually go about their business. And it's very important to do that. Where's the gap? How do I fill the gap? But instead it took a slightly shifted, maybe twisted way of looking at the world. It said, hey, after decades of doing research on how human brains learn, 
We know a lot. How can we harness what we know and put it out there as a set of principles through which we can guide things that are likely to have a better job of being truly education. So the way we framed it was how do we find the education in the educational apps? And it means going back to the literature, but looking for points of consensus. Three tips for parents. Three tips for parents. Know what thy child is doing. <laughs> So if they've downloaded stuff and they're using, I'm not saying you need to be a sneak or a spy, but be informed. Uh, be informed about the field and what's available as well. You know, you are in a position where you can make suggestions. And by looking at common sense media and other sources like that, you're in a position to say, hey, try this one. Okay, so be informed, uh, be knowledgeable. And I guess um, the last one is to find balance. And to remember that just because our kids love something doesn't mean it's right for our kids. Um, our kids love dessert, at least my kids love dessert. And if I had told them every night that they could have sugar-filled dessert and they didn't need to have dinner first, they would have taken that option. And I could have said, but they love it. Shouldn't they be able to eat it? But there's not a parent out there who would say that we should have a dessert-based diet. Um, same is true for apps.